so, yes, my name is Brian McWells. I'm going to speak about the most scientifically accurate animal-themed superhero. <laughs> now, there are very many uh, animal-themed superheroes, uh, partly because uh, Mother Nature is a rich seam of good ideas, but also because if you're a writer, you can take an animal, slap man or woman at the end or at the beginning, and you can just sort of call it a day. Um, <laughs> but this laudable commitment to an early lunch has given us many fine examples of the form. So we have um, Batman, familiar that one? Kangaroo Man, of course. <laughs> Kangaroo Man fans in the room. Uh, the Ferret. <laughs> A Spider Queen. The Zebra. The other guy called the Ferret. <laughs> the Black Widow. The third guy called the Ferret. <laughs> And while it is obvious to us that the ferret would be the most popular choice for an animal-themed superhero, the choice for the uh, most scientifically accurate animal-themed superhero um, is this chap here, uh, the Red Bee. Now, yes, you're right to be underwhelmed at this point. Now, the Red Bee fights crime uh, during the day as District Attorney Rick Rally, and he fights crime at night, and also mostly during the day as the Red Bee in this sort of weird get-up that you see here, but he doesn't do it by himself. Take, for instance, this tricky situation where the bad guy has got the drop on him, all right? You've, I've heard of your work, Mr. Red B, but it ends right here. Maybe. <laughs> uh, and what does he do now? He doesn't panic. What he does is he opens a catch in his, bee, in his belt and releases a bee. <laughs> So, um, yeah, he keeps bees in his belt and the bees will attack the bad guys on his behalf, um, obviously. And as is only healthy for a young man, he has a favorite bee uh, and this bee's name is Michael. <laughs> so um, my thesis that the red bee is the most scientifically accurate uh, animal themed hero uh, is, is sort of based on three comparisons between the red bee and a real bee, or as I call them, similar bees. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, no, it's the exact right mix of boos and cheers. <clears throat> the first one is illustrated by this example, where uh, Michael, the bee, uh, is indicating to the red bee where the secret panel is. Now, um, this may seem far-fetched to you and I, but we know that bees can communicate to each other. So if you are a bee and you find a nice flower somewhere, you can go back to the hive and communicate to the other bees exactly where that flower is using something called a waggle dance. You may have heard of it. It's a type of beer as well. Now, um, it is possible though for us to understand that language, okay? Um, uh, we have actually completely decoded it. So I'm going to teach you now how to speak bee. All right, um, so a waggle dance looks like this. Okay, so there's the bee, waggle, 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 and then it goes back around to the top, and next time around it will waggle, 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 and then it goes to the left instead, and it goes waggle, waggle, right and left, and right and left. The, the amount of time that you waggle corresponds to the distance away from the hive that the flower is. And about a, a second of waggling corresponds to about a kilometer, all right? Um, and the direction away from the hive that you go is uh, designated by the angle of the waggle. So for instance, um, the bees use uh, the sun as a reference point. Now, if the uh, flower is right in front of the sun, you will waggle straight up, okay? That's the direction your waggle dance will be. If it is at an angle, you will waggle in that angle as well, all right? So um, he can communicate to, Michael can communicate to the red bee exactly where the secret panel is, presumably using some kind of dance. And we know this because of this guy, a, 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 a Carl von Frisch, a scientist. He discovered it in the 1920s. Isn't he adorable? Look at him. Yeah, don't get too attached. He advocated for eugenics. So, yeah. But he also worked out the language of bees. Uh, he also incidentally worked out that uh, bees' eyesight shift towards the ultraviolet, which has a side effect that they can't see red. So presumably to Michael, he's the grey bee. <laughs> so the first similar bee between a red bee and a real bee is that they communicate. The second one is, uh, has to do with flight. 
So uh, the red bee can fly. He uses this. It's called his alto gainer. It is a, uh, 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 a box that has a button, a gauge, and a spring. And he can set it to a height, 400 feet in this case, and it will spring him pew, up through the air. Now, this is obviously stupid, but it is a, a kind of flight. And there's this persistent myth with bees that, that they break the laws of physics every time they fly and that they shouldn't be able to fly. Um, now, uh, we know that's not true because bees fly. <laughs> right? But um, uh, we've tracked down where this idea came from. There's a book uh, in the 1930s by, by a French mathematician who said, At first, driven by what has been done in aviation, I have applied to the insects the laws of resistance to air, and I've come to the conclusion that their flight is impossible. And it is true that a bee's flight is impossible if you assume they fly like little airplanes. <laughs> um, but they don't. They fly more like helicopters. They move their, their wings forwards and backwards, flip it like that. And as they flip them forwards and backwards like this, it creates little eddies of air underneath, which are these little pockets of low air pressure which you can use to create lift. They're like tiny little hurricanes underneath the wings every time they fly. Um, and we know this uh, because some scientists stuck a whole lot of mirrors to a bee and shot it with a laser. <laughs> it's on vector plots. And you can tell that they're proper serious scientists because in the paper, they include this cool vector plot, but at no point do they include a picture of a bee with mirrors on it. <laughs> so, um, we, both the red bee and real bees have difficult to understand flight mechanics. Right? <laughs> Um, and the third way that they are uh, similar is illustrated by this example. Um, we see Michael, or Mick, um, giving them the old Bronx cheer. I uh, don't know what that is. Uh, a sting, I suppose. Uh, so um, they raise the question of how Michael always knows what to do. Okay? And so we have to ask ourselves, can you train a bee? And you can train bees. We have trained bees, and bees are actually really, really, really easy to train. So we have trained bees to detect the smell of um, drugs and the smell of um, uh, uh, explosives. And you can do that in about five minutes. Within five minutes, a bee will stick out its little proboscis, its little tongue, and whenever it sniffs whatever smell it is you want them to, to, to react to. To the point where um, a company is, uh, currently has a prototype bee sniffing device the Vaser 136. This is one of their, um, uh, this is a slide from their corporate marketing sort of pack, which is why it looks so corporate marketing y. And um, they also use 16 to 9, which is why it looks weird. Um, and it comes, what happens is you, yeah, you get a cartridge of bees. Yeah. Now, they are very clear in their marketing that the bees are not harmed. The bee spends two hours in the cartridge and then it gets sent back to them and then they release it back into uh, the hive for them to, ha to live out their little bee lives. Um, so they're having a whale of a time, according to these guys. Um, so when they smell the smell of these little sensors, their little tongue will break the sensor um, and then um, the, the person operating the machinery doesn't even need to look at the bees because they all just have a little readout. The little dark uh, sort of squ squares are bees that have their tongue sticking out at that moment. Okay? So, um, it supports my thesis because both uh, the red bee and real bees uh, hate crime. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, hopefully you agree with my arguments that the red bee uh, is the most scientifically accurate of all of the animal themed superheroes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, Sir Bristol.